Okay, good afternoon. My name is uh, Dobradan Marius, and uh, I will present uh, to you in this afternoon uh, a presentation that is related with my activity uh, that was taken in the hover game competition. Mainly because there I had countless problems with my drone. I tried to find a solution, and I will present here uh, the obtained results. The idea is I want to make an analysis of different components that are placed on the drone, of uh, analysis of the influence of this component related to the GPS unit and the magnetometry unit, and in, uh, in the end to find some kind of solution to mitigate all of these problems. Uh, but uh, first word related with the uh, different type of disturbances. Mainly when you analyze the electromagnetic interference, you must take into account the source, the couple, and the receiver. We have mainly two types of source, sources, uh, artificial one and natural generated. Uh, I know that um, in almost all the cases, uh, the natural generated uh, perturbances are considered, are not con taken into consideration, and that are, uh, and these sources are based on the solar activity and on the lighting. But, uh, at least in two cases, there are, was extended power blackouts related to the coronal mass ejection. And in the first case, 50,000 people were uh, affected, and in the second case, 6 million people uh, uh, do not have access to the electricity and so on. Um, from the point of view of the artificial uh, electromagnetic interferences, there are a, a large number of uh, uh, sources. Your phone, your smartphone from your pockets, I don't know, um, diff different type of uh, electric heating system, utility power grid, line, radars, and so on. But uh, here it's interesting to mention some kind of improper design consumer devices. In such a case, uh, due to uh, this kind of devices, all the area related to a port and the surrounding area uh, were impossible to use uh, to get the GPS data due to a, such a de device. Okay. There are several paths that are connected with the um, interference that get from the source to, to a receiver. Mainly we have conducted, uh, conducted EMI. There we must have some kind of uh, uh, physical path. We can count here power lines, but also we can count here uh, different type of buses. We have coupled uh, EMI. And in this case, uh, the source and the receiver must be uh, in the close proximity, but there are no uh, such kind of uh, physical path. And you have radiated electromagnetic interference where the source and the uh, receiver are far away. Um, the radiated electromagnetic inter interference can be narrow band, broad band, in band, like harmonics generated by uh, telemetry uni, for example, and out of the band. The out-of-the-band perturbation are one of the uh, sources that are not taken really in the, into consideration, but they can generate powerful interferences, uh, ma mainly to the intermodulation distortion mechanism. Uh, IMD occurs when several external out-of-the-band out of uh, interference sources combine inside your GPS unit due to different kind of nonlinearity that uh, there uh, exist. And in the end, you'll get a signal in your band of the GPS unit, and this will perturb the function. You can have something like second or order intermodulation, third order intermodulation, fifth order and intermodulation, and so on. But mainly, third order and fifth order, they are the uh, kind of processes that generate these uh, signals. To give you a short example here, we have a video source and a receiver that work on that uh, specific frequencies. Uh, one moment to see. Okay. And uh, at a specific time moment, another um, uh, video device is uh, powered up, and these uh, video devices work on 25 milliwatts, and you see that there are no interferences because the interval between them is uh, is, is correctly choose. The, first, the second source is power down, and the third source is power up. And 
you will see in the same mode that there are no interferences. But in the situation when both uh, second and the third one are power up in the same time, you will see that uh, several intermodulation uh, perturbation, perturbation, perturbation are generated, and you'll see that the quality of the video signal will start to decrease. You can imagine here that you have, uh, s uh, you have some kind of out-of-band uh, disturbances that are generated for a local oscillator from your drone. You go to the wireless in the wild, uh, uh, in, in the open space, and there you have another source of, uh, uh, another source of out-of-band intermodulation. They combine and in your GPS receiver, you'll get uh, uh, jamming of the receiver band and you'll lose the ability to take the data from, from the uh, GPS uh, network. Okay. Um, um, for the methodology, I use all the time in all the analysis hover game drones. I take for each analysis three set of data. Each set will take two minutes and at least two minutes uh, and 30 seconds. And uh, in all the flight time, the flight management unit recorded around 900 parameters. And uh, these parameters were saved on an U-log files. After that, I convert uh, this file in, in another format. And I use this format with MATLAB in order to extract uh, mainly noise and jamming indicator parameters. Uh, but in all the analysis that will follow, I use only jamming parameters, mainly because this parameter uh, is correlated with the electromagnetical environment of the, um, related to the GPS unit. This parameter can take value starting with zero, that means no, uh, no type of uh, interference, is computed inside the GPS unit, and uh, the PX4 documentation recommends that you must to have not more than 50, uh, 40 in order to fly without any kind of problems. But from my experience, you can fly uh, with these parameters around 60, 70, maybe 80 without any kind of problems. But when the parameter goes, let's say, up uh, more than 100, you must to, uh, be, uh, to take some precautions uh, don't have, in order to not have uh, problems. Okay, uh, the first analysis was done uh, uh, on the FC channel and the telemetry links mainly because both of them are able to generate in-band and out-of-the-band interference, interference. I analyzed all of, <coughs> all of these four uh, type of links. The first one is one which uh, the hover game drones is delivered. The other three ones are, uh, are long-range uh, long links. And uh, is, uh, I analyzed all of them. For, in the, for the first link, uh, the RC link is uh, connected for a receiver that go, uh, sends the data from uh, based on S bus to the PX4 uh, flight, uh, flight management unit that run PX4 autopilot. And the telemetry link uh, is used in order to make a marveling connection between uh, ground station and the drone. It's a classical uh, approach uh, that is used. If we go to the TBS crossfire, uh, he, uh, here we have some kind of, uh, here we have a long range communication, bidirectional long range communication, and one of the main advantage of this kind of link is based on the fact that you can have the possibility to, to add an additional GPS receiver, power up by an additional uh, battery, and in the case when your drone crash, you and uh, let's say the, battery, the, bat the main battery was ejected, you have the possibility to get the uh, crashing uh, point location without any kind of problems. Um, Express LRS uh, transmitter is one of the newest open source standard that is uh, widely used in the, mainly in the FPV world. Um, and mainly I use uh, the main channel of the express LRS and the telemetry channel, I use uh, 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 a channel based on uh, uh, 
433 megahertz link. Uh, the next, the, the last uh, analyzed system is based on HashM30 uh, system that is also a long range uh, communication system that uh, support an RC link, telemetry link, and also a, a, a video channel. In my case, I do not use a I do not use a video channel was disabled, and more of that, uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth um, uh, feature are also disabled. Um, okay, in uh, all the results that will present in short time, I uh, um, I shielded all of these generators, all of these uh, units. Uh, and the shield is very easy to implement it. I use food aluminum foil that was warp around the uh, receiver unit, telemetry unit, and on the cable. And all of these shielding uh, are used in all of the other analyzers that are presented here. Uh, now, you see here the results. Um, you see that the TBS Crossfire link is the best one uh, that generates that, that uh, generates the uh, lower value of the uh, jamming indicator. And the worst situation is based on Express LRS link. But uh, Ex Express LRS is an open standard. At, uh, open standard, the harder and the softer is open standard, and many producers can get and build different type of de devices. In my case, I use the RC... Uh, I, okay, uh, I used a receiver produced from a Holy Bro company, I think. I don't remember exactly right now. But it's possible that you buy another kind of devices, and this kind of devices is possible to uh, have better uh, performances and to get lower value of the jamming indicator. If you are asking uh, how that system will, uh, will uh, behave if I do not use uh, shielding. You see here the results, and you'll see that in the upper table we have the uh, results obtained obtain without any kind of jamming indicator, uh, shielding, and in the lower is the table presented in the previous slide where the shielded is uh, used. You see that you get at least 20 units, uh, you get 20, units on the jamming indicator less when you use, uh, you know, when you use a shield. Of course, you can have better solution, mainly because I saw in the market that have some kind of copper tapes that have superior performances. And in this case, I'm sure that uh, this performance can be improved. But these are the results. Okay. Uh, now I will analyze different kind of onboard computers. Um, the main idea is each on-bar computer has its unique uh, electromagnetic, uh, generate unique electromagnetic fields that influence in different modes the, co the drone components. And I analyzed uh, all of these uh, systems. Um, if, for example, uh, the NAFQ and the NAFQ Plus were used for the hover game competition, I think that the Raspberry Pi system do not need any kind of introduction. And the last two systems are um, uh, developed by NVIDIA, system, NVIDIA company and mainly include some kind of uh, uh, um, CODA, CODA, um, uh, some kind of um, uh, units that I are able to process, let's say, uh, some kind of intelligent system like uh, deep learning neural network. And you have there different kind of uh, uh, parameters of these boards. Okay, I, in all of the recordings, recordings I used uh, this, operat uh, this, this specific operating system that are mainly different kind of Linux distributions on 32 and on 64 uh, bytes. Um, if the system had Bluetooth or uh, Wi-Fi, they are deactivated. If uh, the graphical user interface were deactivated also, in order to have only the contribution that is generated the, by the system when process uh, data, in our case, when the human uh, detection program were used, 
and this uh, system or all, all of the systems uh, process the same video file data from the SD card. Okay, the first results that are obtained from the Dragon Board was a little point, uh, a little bit disappointed, uh, mainly because the uh, uh, jamming indicator has a higher value of 50. Uh, and if you see, this board was especially developed for applications that are um, sensitive to the noise. And uh, they put some kind of shielding from the memory system on chip and so on. But even with, even with this shield, you'll see that the parameters, the jamming parameter has a higher value. If we go to the um, uh, NFQ system, mainly the um, Jamming indicator had a huge value, and this uh, were of 170, and this value is given my, may, mainly by the fact that I use a, a, a camera and a HDMI converter. When I removed that uh, from the system, I, I get a lower value, and the result was, same, let's say, is expected mainly because. Um, the HDMI system uh, is, uh, is known to generate a lot of uh, perturbances. Um, when you go to the Raspberry Pi system, um, please uh, be attention that is a, um, a, a strong relation between the operating system and the electromagnetic interference that are generated. Uh, one of the cons consistent results is when the uh, Ubuntu was used, the 60-bit version generate less interference than the 32-version uh, 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 of the same operating system. And if we go to the worst and the best results, another very interesting uh, results you can see here, mainly because when I use the same uh, Raspbian uh, distribution, we get the best EMI results for the Raspberry Pi four boards. The value was 27. And when we use the same operating system with the Raspberry Pi three version, we get, uh, we get um, 54. And this is, let's say, an interesting situation. When you go to uh, NVIDIA development boards, you'll see that if, if we run the same program in uh, CUDA cores, you'll get less perturbances uh, around value 20, 29, 31. Uh, when the case when you run the same program on the ARM, co ARM core, and the value is similar with the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi 3, 3 uh, development board. The value are, are around uh, 50. Okay. Um, mainly because I use uh, Hover Games drone. That drone use uh, GPS uh, unit uh, of M8. Uh, M8 type, but the PX4 Autopilot support other type of uh, either type of uh, GPS units, and here I group them on based on the uh, GPS chip. We have M8, F9, M9, and other types of uh, other types of uh, GPS that are produced by uh, other companies than Ublocks. And the main difference between M8 and M9 is, uh, is given by the fact that M8 chips uh, can acquire data from three constellation, from uh, uh, three uh, constellation, from the four supported, and, and M9 uh, chips can get information for all the four constellations supported. If we uh, the uh, F9 chips have the uh, multiband uh, approach, this is my uh, the main differences. And in order to get the same results uh, uh, with uh, the same results from the same uh, electromagnetic environments, uh, in this analysis we take the data from both uh, GPS receivers. And more of that uh, in two different conditions. In the first one, 
it was a drone configuration, the main drone configuration without any kind of uh, additional components, only the components required the uh, drone to fly. And in the second one, I put it uh, Raspberry Pi board, mainly because it's, a noisiest, uh, it's one of the noisiest boards from the, uh, the one study that was analyzed previously. And you have the result here, and you'll see that mainly in, uh, in, in basic, uh, all the cases, M9 and F9 uh, outperform the M8 chip. And uh, what this will tell you, if you have the previous results of the telemetry channels or the development, development board, and you use another type of GPS receivers, the results will be better, mainly because, for example, in M9 case, you'll get the information from the large number of satellites, you'll see uh, in the last column there, and in this mode, you can get the information from that satellite that has a better signal quality, and in the case of F9 system, mainly because you have an additional band, in the case when the L1 band is uh, jammed, you can get the same information from uh, uh, L2 and L5 uh, bands. Okay, uh, right now I'll present some kind of methods to uh, alleviate these kind of problems. The well-known solution is to use shieldings, and when we use a shield, that shield is no more or no less that uh, uh, far at the cage that constrain your uh, electromagnetic interferences. And uh, uh, if you use frequency higher than one uh, megahertz, you, it's enough for you to use a, uh, a shield with a thickness of 0 .1, 0 0.1 millimeter. But a big problem uh, is the gaps or holes that ex exist in the shields, mainly because especially when you work with the frequency that are higher than uh, 100 megahertz, uh, the effectiveness of your GPS receiver is potentially correl correlated with the gaps. And in the same mode, you can uh, shield the cable. You can have different strategy to use shielding. You can shield each component in the part, or you can build some kind of enclosure uh, where you put all your equipment that you want to protect. But here I'll show you another approach where the shield is placed under the GPS and is some kind of color, wall, wall color, between the uh, uh, drone component and, and, and your GPS system. And you'll see that uh, uh, by uh, using this kind of uh, shield, the GPS jamming indicators go uh, half, half. And this proves the efficiency of this system. And more, if you put th that shield to the ground, you will get a little bit better results. Okay, um, a very important thing is, is to find the best combination of components in order to get the best results. Uh, even if you have a system that generates some kind of disturbances that are lower, this system will be more compatible with another system that generate higher uh, interference uh, in, in the, your drone. And uh, from, the, from this point of view, you can see that uh, right now, I think you have a better understanding of the situation of uh, all the components, and uh, right now you'll be a little bit more, uh, um, let's say, uh, able to choose the best combination in order to have no problem in your system. Okay, for the conducted uh, e e electromagnetic interference, the classical method is to use uh, low-pass filters that are composed from um, um, capacitance or inductance. And in this mode, for, for example, in the left, in the, um, left case, the, that uh, capacitors will ground all the perturbances, and in this mode, your system will be protected. Or you, or you can use an inductor. But here you have, uh, let's say, some problems, mainly because it's very hard to, for you to understand 
what, what is the efficiency of this kind of approach related to your GPS system uh, and mainly related to, to the GPS indicator. And in order to uh, have some kind of insight of this problem, I use some kind of ferrite cable clip that was put on the wire that connects the uh, power module with the flight man management unit. And you'll see that the results are, okay, uh, this, uh, this inductance will uh, suppress the higher frequency, but the results that are get it uh, on the jamming indicator are, uh, let's say, uh, three points. It's not more, but it's one result you can get. Um, okay, another um, important parameter is this distance. The main idea is that the uh, interference weakness with the distance. And the most, most uh, basic solution is to put distance between uh, the power cable and the signal cable, or to put your GPS unit in a higher position. All the recordings that are done up to this point, I use a short mast of seven centimeters. And you'll see that in the case when I use a long mast with 14 centimeters, um, we'll get, a f uh, as it was expected, uh, lower jamming values, but uh, um, these values are around uh, 15. Okay, another solu solution is to use short cables, mainly because the one, the, uh, a cable is, uh, one, is an antenna, an antenna that is able to generate and to receive different type of uh, electromagnetic in, 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 uh, disturbances. And the solution is to use uh, short cables here. Okay, another uh, problem, another enemy in the electromagnetic interference butterfly, butterfield is the inductance. When you have higher, higher currents that uh, are um, um, change the value in short time interval, you'll get higher uh, uh, noise levels. Okay, one, one solution is to use short cable, but also it's important to you to uh, salt, uh, to, salt, uh, to uh, tightening the, the connector, to have better uh, soldering in order to decrease the strain inductance. Okay, you also can use uh, as another solution, uh, twisted pair cables. Um, uh, this uh, approach is very used in the, mainly in the differential system, but even if you do not have a, uh, such ki kind of communication, uh, based on the, this approach, your loop area is reduced and any effect generated by uh, variable magnetic fields are also reduced. Oh, and in the case you, when you use uh, I2C buses that are connected between two systems based on twisted pair cable, you see that there are some kind of recommendation on the uh, uh, official documentation. And uh, another approach is to use single po point uh, ground. Uh, this is a common mistake in uh, mainly because you can, you can have some kind of uh, daisy chain configuration. For example, if you have a LiDAR light sensor, the most straightforward solution for you is to connect it to power up this from the flight management unit. But, but, but doing in this mode, you will get some kind of, uh, this kind of problems. And the solution is to use an um, uh, BAC, battery eliminator, el eliminator circuit, uh, that will power your sensor, and in this mode, you'll get a parallel configuration, like a uh, right figure, and in this mode, all of these program, problems are mitigated. Um, okay, in the end, what can I tell to you? Uh, the main idea is if you want to develop, if you want to build a drone, certainly you have, you'll have problem with the electromagnetic interferences. And if you want to deal with these problems, you must solve it. Of course, there are many solutions, 
But for example, from your point of view, it's not important if you work on a system that uh, runs, uh, let's say, uh, Raspbian operating system or if it runs Ubuntu operating system. The goal is to get the best results. And this goal can be achieved in many th in, in, by many approaches. And I think uh, right now you will have a better view of this problem. Okay, thank you very much.